13 cars. In the grass down here, some dead damage. Uh, this one's hurt really bad, guys. Yep, and that is a hard impact for Hightower. I confirm that one is hurt. A lot of damage to that race car there. Yep, Brandon, a uh, big slap down. Oh, trouble! trouble. Chad, it's Blunt. Chad Blunt. He's hit heavily. That hurt. That's in turn three. And that's it going into turn three. That's a that's a back yeah. straightaway crash somehow. He's hit the inside wall somehow. Side he's trying to make this pass. And I think it's gonna happen. Oh! oh man. Up across a racetrack and contact with a 07 car. Reed Sorensen gets a piece. That's nice and wide. Oh my good. Wow. And a hard lick right there. That's your points leader, folks, here for the NASCAR Nationwide series, and he could be done for the night. They're going to definitely be behind the wall a while right here fixing this car. Man. There's the one car for Reed Sorensen who was being shown in the ninth spot. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what happened right there. That happened so fast. Yeah, I saw him running up. 07 Lester Buildings. Chevrolet did a nice job avoiding. You see Josh get sideways, and he makes contact on the inside with that 75 truck of Clay Rogers. Clay, in turn, hits the 40 of Chad Chaffin. It really threaded the needle. You can see Josh, the, the 75 started to come up, and Josh wanted to lay off of the of the 40 on the outside, just was in a place that he... Oh, that's when cautions happen, when, when someone's holding you up a bit, and you're trying to get out. Oh, oh, one into the wall. Looks like the 50 truck in the wall. Josh Rayon. That had every look of a flat tire. Sure did. So the caution is out. Rayon was running in the 28th spot at the time. And in the wall, Josh Richards, 39, Jamie Dick, 23. That's one of which cars on fire. Is it under the hood? The 23. Fire truck right there. Green, white check. Yeah, Richards got to get out of that car. He needs to get out the right side window somehow. He's got the flames on the left side right by him. Safety crews quickly there. You see Josh is moving in the cockpit, but he's relaxed and letting the crews do their thing. I say relaxed. He's not panicked. Certainly. I started to say, you're a lot more relaxed than I would be inside that car. <laughs> understand. With the flames going like that. But no, they did get there fast. And somehow caught that foam. On fire. I'm not sure there's not a. I think it might be a fire under the hood of the 23. It just looked like uh, it was coming from the left rear of the 39. Yeah, yeah maybe. Josh obviously out of the car, just fine. Andy, I like your theory that the fire was actually under the hood of the 23 car. Whoa, look out. Uh oh, there goes the car. Yeah. There's a car. That car. <laughs> I don't think so. No. The car just took off by itself. It wasn't put in gear. Okay. And when they unhooked it, uh, moved it around. Yeah. And it's that away. <laughs> <laughs> She's backing up by itself. <laughs> yeah, just nice job there, get, doing a three-point turn and get turned around. And nobody behind the wheel. Pocono. These two guys ran one, two. Ooh. Oh, sliding around. It's the 51 of Justin Johnson. He and contact, contact with the inside wall. Oh. Just as that was happening, Casey Kane was trying to take the lead away from Elliott Sadler. We'll have to see if NASCAR allows that pass because we'll we'll have to find out when the caution came out. Yeah, and they don't, it's not a judgment call. Right. They will go back to the last uh, transponder scoring loop. And wherever the 18 and the two were at the point. Kenny Hobble got off into the grass. Looks like he's picked up one of the signs. Yep. The other part of it's laying on the track right below the starter stand. The other half of that sign that's on the nose of Kenny Hobble's car is laying right there on the track. Right in the lane, under the starter stand.
Stinky in Little League this weekend. Whoa, got a wreck. Hold that thought. Well, accident, action. That's Dave Blaney in the Amico car, the ultimate Amico machine. Pontiac, Bill Davis on car. He loops it back around. There was some contact. That's over in turns one and two, and that will bring out the fifth caution flag. Feels like it happened getting into turn one, Jerry, and they came to rest just right there in the middle of one and two. Well, I can't tell exactly what happened yet. We'll see if we have it on a replay. There's the Pontiac safety car with the field in tow. Let's see if we can see entering turn one what might have happened, Chad. Looks like a deja vu of what happened with Tim Fita earlier tonight. Uh, just a slight little contact that's going to send someone back and into the wall there. That's Lance Hooper in the WCW car. They body slammed the 5th to 93 car into the outside concrete. Elton Sawyer making a move. Boy, Mike Bliss has dodged another one. Around he went. Ooh, oh. ooh! Martin Waugh shooting right up the middle. Who was that? Martin Waugh. His, yeah. his spotter needs to be a, a little more aggressive. Uh, or maybe he needs to listen closer. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm Michel Dizier, a Frenchman in NASCAR. Welcome to my city in Nice, and I'm very happy to explain you my project. My passion for the sport automobile remonte à ma naissance, puisque depuis depuis que je suis tout petit, j'ai toujours voulu être pilote automobile. Mon père faisait des rallyes dans les années 60, donc peut-être le gène le gène vient de là aussi. I understand it was a trip when you were 14 years old that made you a big fan of NASCAR racing. Yes, my first time in the United States was in Charlotte. So I discovered NASCAR when I was 14 and I fall in love about this sport. But I would never imagine that would be so tough and so difficult to be here, but uh, I'm so happy. La NASCAR est aujourd'hui le sport motorisé. Right, we are here with Scott Hecker, winner of the Bully Hill Vineyards 125 at Watkins Glen International. Scott, you just picked up your first win in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East. Tell us about your run. It was amazing. You know, we got mired back a little bit. So I knew I just had to drive really hard to get back to the front. And once we got back there, I started to conserve because we're still about halfway to go. And the uh, last 20 laps, the car was just amazing. It was right there. Now, you talked about earlier how uh, your family's just about five hours from here, that this is a very important win. Just talk, elaborate a little bit more on, on the emotions and just what it means to win here at Watkins Glen. I mean, it means the world. Uh, my dad started coming here in the early 1970s to watch Can-Am races. And uh, we've been here camping to watch vintage races. We've come here and camped to watch the NASCAR or Spring Cup weekend. So to, to win on that weekend, you know, seven years later, uh, this is amazing. All right. Scott Hecker, congratulations. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.